All right, Texas A&M 2022 college football schedule preview. This is a whole series of videos I'm doing where I'm taking a look at uh, some of the schedules for the more prominent teams coming up uh, this season. This is not a prediction video. I do prediction videos, but I don't start those until June. In the month of April, I like to just take a look at some of these schedules, figure out the non-con games, where are the difficult road games, what does the conference schedule look like, rivalry games, where's the bye week, where's the trap games, uh, that kind of thing. I've done a whole series of them. There's a playlist. You can uh, click back and take a look at the ones I've already done if you're interested. But up today, like I said, the Texas A&M Aggies, of course, head coach Jimbo Fisher. Lots of expectations for Texas A&M, some of which are not reasonable. The, 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 the signing class that Texas A&M just had is going to have a very minimal impact on this season. Signing classes, generally speaking, uh, are not designed to help you now. They're designed to help you. They're not designed to help you today. They're designed to help you tomorrow, next year, the year after. Now, there will be a handful of true freshmen who uh, who will get some playing time for sure. But the fact that Texas A&M had the number one recruiting class this season doesn't necessarily mean they're getting ready to go 15-0. and Now, they've recruited at a high level in, 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 in besides just this past year. Um, obviously, they had the number one class this past year, but they've been recruiting. they got several top five classes, several top ten classes. They've got a lot of talent. They had a pretty good year in 2020, the COVID year. I think only one loss they had. Um, and then last year, of course, they beat Alabama, but like clockwork, lost four games. And that's been kind of the story of Texas A&M since they entered the SEC, with the exception of a couple of years. They had one year under Johnny Manziel. They had the COVID year in 2020, like I mentioned. But most other years, it's you know, it's like, okay, Texas a and is going to be pretty good this year. And they turn out to be pretty good. But then at the end of the season, you look down and they have four losses. And it just is, it, it, you know, it's like Wisconsin goes 10 and 2 almost every year. <laughs> Texas A&M seems to find a way to go 8 and 4. And they did it again last year. Lost at home to Arkansas 20 to 10. Lost it, uh, at home to Mississippi State the following week 26 to 22. Two inexcusable losses. I know Arkansas has been a good story. And I know Mississippi State has Mike Leach. They should not have beat Texas A&M last year, though, either of those teams. And you lost to both of them in back-to-back weeks. And you say, well, we had a backup quarterback. Yeah, same backup quarterback that the following week, after you lost two weeks in a row, beat Alabama. So you can't, you know, I mean, you should have won those two games. Texas A&M should have been undefeated after that Alabama game, but they weren't. They weren't. They had two losses. You, uh, you beat Alabama, you get a streak of wins here uh, at Missouri, home against South Carolina, home against Auburn. And you lost on the road to Ole Miss. Now, that, that wasn't that bad of a loss. Ole Miss was a good team last year. They won 10 games. Um, but then the last week of the season, you lost to LSU. I, I mean, LSU had one of the worst teams last year they've had in my lifetime. And and you lost to them. And so you finished the regular season 8-4. and four. You did make a bowl game, but had to, it, it got canceled due to COVID. I believe the COVID was with the other team. At, I can't remember, and it doesn't really matter. So that's why there was only 12 games. You were, yes, you were bowl eligible. You made a bowl game, but it was, uh, it was unable to be played. So Texas A&M finished 2021 at 8 and 4. A disappointing look, it's very rare that you beat Alabama and then look back and go that was a disappointing season. But that was a di- another disappointing season in my opinion for Texas A&M. Uh can they do better in 2022? Well, let's try to find out. They kicked things off at home week 1, Saturday, September 3rd against Sam Houston. They'll be a huge favorite in that game. Uh, a lot of backups will be playing in the second half. That's one that Texas A&M should comfortably win. Now, App State is a big step up from Sam Houston, but again, not a team that should be competing with someone the caliber of Texas A&M. Yes, I know uh, App State beat Michigan uh, 16 years ago or 15 years ago or whatever it was. That doesn't have anything to do today with today. Uh, App State beat Michigan like in 2007, and then they lost like to the next 15 Power 5 teams in a row that they played. Um, They lived off that win against Michigan for over a decade. Uh, Texas A&M should win that game. And then a very interesting game against Miami. Now, I like Texas A&M in this game primarily because the game's at home, but this is a dangerous game for Texas A&M. The the more I look at Miami and what they have coming back and their schedule – And, you know, just things you hear from down there. The more I hear, the more I like about Miami this coming season. Now, I still don't think they're good enough to beat Texas A&M on the road. At least they shouldn't. But this is a dangerous game here. Tyler Van Dyke is a legitimate quarterback down there. They're excited with the new coaching staff, Mario Cristobal and company. 
Um, uh, Texas A and M better be ready for this game. I, I, you know, I think they should win, but this is not a gimme or a cupcake game, in my opinion. I mean, you got to remember, last year you lost in back to back weeks around this same time of the year to Arkansas and Mississippi State. So don't act like Miami can't come in there and whip you. They could. I think you'll be favored, but th- this this the, this is looking like a better and better game the closer we get to the season. Then you kick off your SEC schedule uh, against Arkansas. Revenge game. They're one of those teams that beat you last year. Arkansas is going to be pretty good again uh, this year. K.J. Jefferson comes back. They do lose that really good wide receiver, but they brought some talent in uh, through the uh, through the transfer portal to help replace it. They're going to have a good running game. They're going to have good lines of scrimmage. They get a couple of key guys back on defense from last year's team. I think Arkansas is going to be a very similarly – good team uh, as they were last year, and they beat you last year in your place. Now, this is a neutral site game for no reason. Uh, you play them in Arlington, Texas. It's absolutely ridiculous. There's just no there's no point in this. There's no point in this at all. But it is. It's a neutral site game. And then on the road at Mississippi State, again, games that Texas A&M has got to start winning. You have to start beating these teams that – you supposedly think you're better than every year. I do think you're a better. I think you're a better team and a better program than Arkansas and Mississippi State, but you lost to both of them last year. You can't lose to them this year. You can't lose to them this year. You need to be undefeated when you head into that game Saturday, October eighth at Alabama. Now this is going to be much tougher than last year. Last year you had them at home and you kind of snuck up on them with a backup quarterback that they didn't have a lot of tape on. No sneaking up this year. Um, Alabama is going to be better this year than they were last year. It's a home game for Alabama. You'll be an underdog here, even if you're undefeated. Even if you're undefeated. It's hard to beat Alabama anywhere, anytime. Um, it's almost impossible to beat them two years in a row, and it's almost impossible to beat them at their place. And you you would have to accomplish both those things in order to win this game. You'd have to beat them the second year in a row, and, and it's going to be at their place. So the, the, the deck is stacked against you there. You come out of that and you get your bye week. Too bad you can't have your bye week before that. That would be better. But you have it after that. Come out of your bye week. You play your yearly cross-divisional game against South Carolina, this time on the road in Columbia. You've beat South Carolina every single time you've played them since joining the SEC. I know they have Spencer Rattler, but I don't, you know, I don't think they have enough around him to be favored in that game. You'll be favored. You'll, you're a better team. It can be tough to play in Columbia, although Texas A&M hasn't had any trouble. Like I said, they've yet to lose to South Carolina in the nine, ten years, whatever it is, they've been in the SEC, and they play every single year. After that, you get a home game against Ole Miss. People are down on Ole Miss. I saw a win projections the other day. They had Ole Miss winning something like five or six games. I don't know. They won ten games last year. I know Matt Corral is gone. But they're going to have, as long as Lane Kiffin's there, they're going to have a good offense. You get them at home. I think you'll be favored. And you play Florida. Now you catch them on a down year, and you beat them two seasons ago, which was probably the best team they've had since the Urban Meyer years. That 2020 team with uh, with with Kyle Trask and uh, and and uh, what's the, uh, the the Franks or whatever his name was, the tight end, and all those wide receivers. That's probably the best team they've had, at least offensively, since Urban Meyer was there. And you handled them at home during the COVID year. For no reason at all, you get them at home again. <laughs> You'll be favored. They got a brand new coaching staff and not a lot of talent, to be honest. You should win that game. Then you go on the road to play what might be the worst team in the SEC West, Auburn. Speaking of not having any talent, 25 transfers, half the coaching staff is gone. Uh, half the administration and the boosters and the alumni already want Harson fired. Not a good situation going on at Auburn. It would be very embarrassing if you somehow lost that game. Uh, then you get your last non-con game of the year, Saturday, November 19th against UMass. I mean, this is a 100 to nothing type of game. And then you finish things up the same way you did last year against uh, LSU. Now, you lost to them last year, for no again, for no reason. Well, I know what the reason was. At the end of the season, you looked down and you went, uh-oh, we only have three losses. I guess we're going to have to lose to LSU so we can go 8-4 and four like we always do. And you did. You went out and lost to LSU and finished 8-4. and four. You get him at home this year. Brian Kelly's been brought in as the head coach. I think that is an upgrade over Ed Orgeron. 
It's going to take Brian Kelly, I think, a year or two to adjust to the SEC, though. Getting him at home is a big deal, as opposed to playing there. If things go like I expect them to go this season for both you and LSU, then I think you'll be uh, obviously favored in that game. And it could be a big game. It could be a big game, you know, for a couple of different reasons. It, 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 it could be a game you have to win to win the SEC West. It could be, you, what if you're 10-1 and one with a loss to Alabama? Right? What if you're 10-1 and one with a loss to Bama going into that game and Alabama's undefeated? Well, if you win that game, you finish 11-1. and one. You, you won't win the West. Alabama will. But we've seen 11-1 and one teams from the SEC West that didn't win their division get into the playoffs before. I'm not saying you will be 10-1 and one heading into that game. I'm just saying what if that has the potential to be a big game, plus it's a revenge game because uh, they beat you last year. So non-con schedule outside of Miami, nothing much to worry about. App State isn't somebody you want to go to sleep on completely, but they've got no business competing with Texas A&M. Miami really the only non-con game of significance, and you get, it, you get them at home and they got a brand-new coaching staff, and it's early in the year. Those are, those are some clear advantages for Texas A&M in that game. As far as the conference schedule goes, back-to-back -back road games, well, if you include the uh, neutral site game, which isn't a home game, you've got three SEC games in a row right there that aren't at home. Two of them are true road games, one a neutral site. Arkansas, Mississippi State, Alabama. You'll definitely be favored in the Mississippi State game. You'll definitely be an underdog in the Alabama game. And I think you'll be favored in the Arkansas game, especially if you handle Miami the week before. So going two and one in a stretch, a three-game stretch like that where you don't play at home, that wouldn't be horrible. At South Carolina, you'll be a big favorite. Ole Miss could be a little bit tricky, but you get them at home. Florida's in rebuild mode. Auburn might be the worst team in the West. Uh, UMass is horrible. And LSU, again, first-year coaching staff. Favorable schedule, in my opinion. At Alabama is obviously the, the toughest game of the year. What's the second toughest game of the year? Miami? Arkansas neutral site? LSU at home, Ole Miss at home. Hard to hard to pinpoint what the second hardest game of the year is. I think this is a, fa a favorable schedule for Texas A&M. SEC championship will be Saturday, December 3rd. Can Texas A&M make it there for the first time since joining the SEC? That's a tall task. Alabama is loaded. You know, they might have the best player. That, they might have the best offensive player in football in Bryce Young and the best defensive player in football in Will Anderson. If they're not the best, they're both top five players nationally and Alabama's loaded just about everywhere else too it's going to be tough to uh it's going to be tough to knock them out of the SEC title game but if anybody in the west can do it it it, it, it maybe it's Texas A&M I don't know you guys can let me know down below what you think their record will be again I will do prediction videos starting in June basically the same thing I'll put the schedule up on the screen I'll go through the games one by one and instead of just talking about the games I'll tell you who I think is going to win and lose every single game on all these teams' schedules, and I'll give you an exact record for all these teams whose schedules I'm previewing now. So, anyway, let me know what you think down below.